rinse my hair. I just didn't have time to take a shower. I promise I'll probably take one after I do this uh, do this video. Uh, today I'm gonna be doing some oil change on my GT350. Uh, it's been a couple of track days and I usually do my oil changes every two to three track days just to keep it fresh. And I hear a lot of horror stories about people not doing it right and or dealerships screwing up the oil changes. So, uh, well, it's going to be pretty quick and easy. I'll show you guys how to do it properly and maybe I'll touch up on a couple areas where people are messing up and again, pretty straightforward stuff. So, uh, well, tune in and let's get started. So before I get started, I'll go over what you need um, to get things done. And this is my oil, go-to oil that I use for a long time, Redline Synthetic 5W50. Obviously for, for this car you need to use 5W50. Uh, I like Redline, I uh, discussed about this before. Uh, they tend to give you all the information about what they use in their oil, all the contents is all very uh, black and white on their website. There's no hidden things. They're a little bit more on the expensive side, but I think it's well worth it, especially uh, in cars like these where uh, the engines rev uh, at high RPM. Uh, and as far as the filter goes, I just use OEM filters and Motocraft. Uh, again, you can purchase this at any website. Uh, you can just go Google and search, buy the one that's uh, the cheapest. But again, it has to be for this specific car and it actually has this little uh, Shelby mark emblem and it tells you exactly how much you need to torque it down to as you can see right here it says 16 to 18 pound foot and we will again touch up on it and that's most common problems that the dealerships and and people are messing up on so um, and what you need obviously is a torque wrench uh, this is my oil change torque wrench is already set to 18 foot pounds and uh, again I have this little cup to be able to uh, fit into that little filter works perfectly and uh, Ford actually supplies you with another torque filter cup here that fits into their filter so I just didn't want to use it because it looks nice um, I just keep it in my car trunk and you also do need uh, this little allen key to be able to open up. Um, it's a T30 Allen key uh, to, be able to open up the little cover to be able to reach the oil filter. And you do need some sort of funnel. It's my ghetto homemade oil funnel that I just cut the old uh, oil bottle. Works pretty well. You don't need to buy another funnel. Just use something like this. Works just fine. And Obviously, you're gonna need a trusty jack and jack stand. Uh, make sure you use jack stand. Don't just use a jack, just in case this thing fails. You wanna save yourself. Uh, and another thing is you need a big ass oil catch can or oil catch pan. Uh, again, this car holds 10 and a half quarts of oil and oil flows out at very high rapid rate so unless you got a very large base the oil can quickly fill up and overflow and it will make a big mess in your garage so uh, make sure you have something like this I think this is a um, I forget how big this is but it's one of the bigger ones that are made for small trucks and whatnot it works pretty well for this car um, so yeah that's really all you need um, so yeah, let's get started here. Alright, first thing first, pop open the hood. And generally before I let the oil drain out, uh, you do want to have this oil cap uh, opened up so the oil flows easier and, and faster out the uh, the oil pan so I'm gonna get to that once I have the car on the jack stand alright so just to make sure you can see the car supported on both ends one by the the, the, the jack and one by the, the jack stand and uh, 
you definitely want to have two points of support just in case one of them fail. All right, and one more thing before you put the pen in, make sure you have whichever pen you have on airflow so when oil starts draining in it can quickly go inside I made a mistake one time I didn't open this up and oil just filled up and start to overflow even though the, in, the opening might be big enough if you really got to have second source of air uh, going in so there's it doesn't clog up or anything like that so make sure you have this open all right now the jack stand is up like I said we're gonna keep the oil cap open but if you look right there the little yellow cap right in the center underneath the transmission or right in front of the transmission uh, that's where the oil is going to drain through now what I use is this front end of my socket wrench uh, and this works just fine I think this is a half inch uh, socket wrench and this little tip fits right in in that little square hole and and it comes off so I'm going to be using this right in there and what I do is I barely crack it loose and then I slowly open it with my hands and once I feel the pressure building up oil is about to come out I quickly take it out and let it drain into the oil pan uh, so that's what we're gonna do here alright guys I'm hoping you can see this a little bit I'll show you how quickly the oil flows out of it uh, again I just had that uh, the oil drain plug cracked open a little bit so now I can hand loosen it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep going with my hand there you go and you can see that I hope so but again, yeah, it just starts pouring right out just like that. So you better be ready, otherwise it's going to start going everywhere. Alright, so now we're just going to let that sit and let it all drain. Alright guys, it's been about a good 15 minutes. And if you look at the, the drainage point, you can see it's just barely dripping down now. I mean, some guys just wait long as time until that doesn't even happen anymore I personally am fine with uh, a little bit of remaining oil in there uh, it's not a big deal uh, at this point what I do is uh, I find that uh, yellow plug wipe it down real good and uh, just click it back in there alright guys and this is what that rubber plug not sorry the composite uh, plug looks like and some guys go to the extent where they buy new plugs every time they do an oil change it's not that expensive but again I've been doing this multiple multiple times now but uh, I don't see any signs of leakage or if you look at this little green uh, rubber gomlet I do check that to make sure there's no significant wear on it and again this is almost my sixth seventh oil change and uh, looks still pretty much brand new so I'm okay putting this back in there all right guys I try to show you guys as much as I can again right now I just have it almost hand tightened and you'll see what I mean when I go all the way down it's gonna make a little click right there and once it makes that little click into its position I know it might feel not so snug and it could be a little scary but it's good you don't have to worry about it it's not coming out anymore at that point so just hand tighten it real good once until you hear that little click and you are good to go just wipe that area down a little bit and now we're moving on to the oil filter area all right and so for the oil filter area you're gonna use this little Allen key and if you go right up under driver side floor pan you'll see this little square box and there's that little Allen key spot so again that's what I'm gonna do to open it up right here and it comes 
opens up pretty easy. Again, you also don't want to over tighten this too much. It really doesn't come out once you hand tighten it. And there it comes. And it's out. And the best way to reach the oil filter here that I found is instead of going up from the bottom, if you look right along the side, you can actually see that little white oil filter. I don't know if you can actually see that there. It's pretty dark in there, but I'm hoping you guys can. And again, uh, I'm going to use that uh, socket wrench to loosen it. A little bit and then I'm gonna hand loosen it obviously before I loosen it all the way I'm gonna have the the oil drain pan underneath it so and this is where it gets a little messy because as soon as this comes out the oil drains and it starts to get underneath and above the this plastic tray some guys create a little funnel here with the plastic baggie so it doesn't get everywhere uh, I just tend to just wipe it around with the paper towel afterwards and it's fine. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be the cleanest area, but uh, I did see that when you take the car to the dealer, they just don't even care about anything. So they let it drain and you'll see huge pools of oil underneath your pan here and they just let it sit. So some guys think their oil is actually leaking and stuff. And uh, yeah, that's another downside of taking these to dealerships. It's not their car. They're never going to take that extra little step to keep it clean. For these cars, you have to torque this filter down, like I told you, to 16 to 18 foot pounds. Uh, that's extremely important. Most uh, problems that people come uh, out of these things um, are because uh, the dealerships didn't torque it down and the vibration this car creates from flip plane, uh, plane crank it just lets that come loose and once the oil filter comes loose it, it's gonna lose all the oil and next thing you know your engine is seized and done so uh, again I'm not saying dealerships are gonna do that but I've, I've, I've heard and seen stories where uh, you know people uh, lost their engine motor from that type of situation by taking that uh, their car to the dealerships or, uh, or sometimes to some some place uh, to do the, the oil change and they just didn't torque it down properly so again some of the newer GT350s don't need to torque this down they have cartridge style filters that's a whole new another story but again if you have one of these uh, the can filter types which to be honest does better job at filtering you just gotta you just gotta filter it uh, the torque it down properly and you just don't have any problems um, so again right now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let this uh, filter come out and let it drain. And again, it's kind of hard to show you guys everything, but again, I'm using this little filter wrench uh, to get right up on there here. I'll show you how I do it. I don't know if you can see it, but again, I get right up underneath like this, get to the filter and loosen it up a little bit until I can hand loosen it. Same thing when I tighten it, same thing until I torque it down to the right spec. So yeah, I almost forgot to mention, probably the most important thing, you need a bunch of paper towels to keep you clean. Keep your car clean. And the filter area, once the filter comes out, it, it tends to drain pretty quickly. There's not much left in there already, so. Uh, it's been about a minute or so, two minutes, and it's already pretty much done. So I'm going to just clean out that area real good and uh, put on some new filters, and we're ready to rock and roll. All right, so again, also very important part here, and I'll show you guys. Before, before you put in your filter, and most people know this already, what you want to do is into your new oil filter you want to smear a little bit of oil around the seal the o-ring so that way it creates a perfect seal once it gets torqued down you never want to push this in dry and also you can pre-fill the filter just a little bit before you uh, torque it in there and that's that always helps um, so i'll show you and 
and again how I do it is again I just pour a little bit of oil right in the in the center let it flow in there a little bit and if you see a little bit smear I just dab it a little bit on my finger and all I do is just go around until you see that it's been pretty much wet around the ring just like that and that's more than enough you don't have to put too much on there and now it's ready to be torqued down if you're not so sure it always says how much to torque it down to 16 to 18 foot pounds and that is where you want it I tend to go to 18 it's uh, I think it's probably a better idea on this car oh another thing is when you take off your other oil filter make sure that o-ring that I showed you has come off completely sometimes if the o-ring gets stuck on there and it's not out and you put your new oil filter now you got two o-rings on there and that's recipe for disaster and guys another thing is trust me you can never hand torque this thing to 18 foot pounds you have to use a uh, that wrench don't think you can tighten as hard as you can with your hands if you're strong hands but still not gonna be enough so yeah use the wrench all right so it's been tightened to 18 foot pounds do you want to double triple check it and now this little piece goes back on and that's it after that you just gotta fill it up with an oil so all right and obviously before you fill it up you want to put the car on a level ground so after you fill it up you can check the oil level all right so well oil all drained new filters in now we just gotta put 10 quarts of oil in there I know the instruction says 10 and a half quarts to max but again the way I've been uh, trying it uh, adding a 10 brand new quarts Generally, the oil level is pretty spot on. I don't want to overfill it either. Uh, and a little bit of oil remaining because I'm never going to drain every single oil in the car when I drain it. So uh, usually, uh, as long as I've been doing this on this car, 10 quarts seems to do just fine. So, well, here we go. While we're waiting until cars being filled up with uh, brand new oil, I do want to talk to you guys about why everyone should be doing their own oil changes, especially in these type of specialty vehicles. I'll share some of my own personal stories. Um, it's not this car, this is my other vehicles I've owned in the past. I had a situation, a dealership had overfilled my vehicle and also underfilled my vehicle at different time, meaning they added too much oil or they added too little of an oil. And also I had instances where they left my oil cap completely open. Uh, and also I had instances where they never fully latched down my front hood so I had to stop in the middle of freeway to close my hood and I had them scratch my wheels doing tire rotations I've also had them scratch my paint doing a car wash so you see where I'm going with this and there, there's more things that they've done but again I'm not going to talk about it all now imagine you take your Shelby and they do an oil change and Joe Shimo doesn't torque your filter down and you go to freeway you're driving down filter gets loose and now you're losing oil uh, of course you don't know that and at some point your engine ceases your motor's done now you need a brand new engine sure since you've got an oil change done at a, at a dealership they're gonna fix it for you right yeah they probably would the problem is now you have to sit at the dealership many many times to fill up the paperwork, to try to get the warranty work done, and how X amount of months go by, and they finally get a new engine for you, they put in a new engine. By the way, by the same Joe Schmo that didn't know how to do things properly, simple things like an oil change, now it's gonna be replacing your engine. Guess what's gonna happen? New engine goes in, you Take your car back, you're happy, you drive the car, something's rattling, something doesn't feel right, something doesn't drive right. Now what are you going to do about it? You try to sell your car, trade it in, your engine serial number doesn't match your car serial number, 
Now your car value is down at the bottom. All of that can easily be avoided again if you do things properly on your own. And to those of you who are afraid to lose warranty work if you do your own oil change, trust me guys, dealerships cannot void your warranty if you do your own oil change. Just keep your receipts, you're going to be fine. And also just think about it, sure you may get that one guy who know what he's doing, but understand these guys at dealerships, they're always overloaded, they're working hard. And again, they have to get these cars in and out, in and out, they're always pressured. And in those kind of environment, it's very difficult to do a proper job at simple minor things that could lead to catastrophic problems if you don't do it properly. All right, well, it's all filled and just got tightened the cap. And usually I want to wait about 30 minutes uh, before oil settles down. And uh, uh, generally what Ford recommends is you, they want to uh, have you run your engine for about 15 minutes, uh, shut it off and take the oil uh, level reading to be most accurate. Uh, you can do it that way uh, if you really want to be accurate about it. But like I said, generally 10 quarts, I haven't any problems. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's about it. See, it's pretty easy and now I know I can sleep sound and done everything the right way and uh, and the car's gonna go strong again. Uh, so yeah, and guys, I do have a couple new stuff coming in pretty soon. Uh, it's gonna be pretty exciting and hopefully I can uh, tumble down some of my lap, talent, lap, lap times uh, in the future. So uh, keep, uh, keep me updated if you guys have any questions. Let me know. Subscribe, leave me comments. Cheers. Thank you.